We have resting tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia. The rigidity you elicit by asking the patient to keep the limbs floppy and explain to them that you're just going to maybe uh, flex and extend the elbow. You can test it at the elbow. You can test it at the wrist. And one of the hardest things for patients to do is tell them to relax. The minute you tell them to relax, people do kind of get tense. And so you want to kind of repeatedly do this. And I often use the words, uh, Jocelyn, please try and keep your limb as floppy as you can. There we go. And what you're going to perceive with rigidity is uh, increased resistance to movement. And when you feel increased resistance to movement, really there are three choices, uh, but two big choices. One would be spasticity, the other is rigidity. And those two phenotypes differ. Someone with spasticity will have a weak extremity, of course. And with spasticity, the resistance you feel in one direction is much different than the resistance you feel in the other direction. So for example, the resistance with flexion may be very slight, a lot of resistance to extension. There's a big difference between flexion and extension in spasticity, and that's what creates the characteristic postures of someone with hemiparesis. And then the other feature of spasticity is it's velocity dependent. The faster you go, the more resistance you feel. Rigidity, in contrast, the extremity is not weak, the resistance that you feel when the patient's trying to be floppy is the same with flexion and extension. There are no characteristic postures, and it is not velocity dependent. So, and then sometimes, you know, the rigidity of Parkinson's disease has that cogwheel character, but really all that is is rigidity plus tremor. The cogwheeling is the same frequency as the, the tremor. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.